Hi everyone and welcome back to the organic modeling tutorial series. This is going to be our second tutorial and what we're going to be looking specifically into this tutorial is we're going to be looking into two things. The first thing we're going to look in is how we can take this um, BREP, complex BREP geometry that we generated by aggregating and then extracting our attribute and joining them and convert this into a mesh and not only any mesh but a mesh that is going to be useful and good for us to work further. And then after we generated this mesh, we're going to go further and use the plugin Weaverboard from Giulio Piacentino to uh, edit this mesh and start uh, generating this organic filling that we have been looking at. So we're going to be looking at how different parameters and different subdivision and smoothing algorithms can be used to achieve different results. And so we're going to try this a bit around on our structure. Let's get started. If you follow the first tutorial, you can just follow and build the file. You can just continue on that file, as this is exactly that. If you don't have that file, you can just find in the description uh, below the video uh, a link to download the file, and you will find also a work file, which is what we're going to work from. So you'll find that we have this aggregation, which can be edited, and here we have these sliders where we can modify our base attribute and then when we update the um, aggregation we're gonna get different results and so the the shapes that we get here are quite interesting but you will notice that they're not very organic into they don't have a very organic look and they're not particularly smooth and that's because the number of faces that we have is very low so what we're going to do is we're going to convert this into a mesh and then we're going to be using Weaverbird to apply different subdivisions and different smoothing algorithms to make it look more, so to say, organic. So as you might know, there is a very quick way to convert a mesh, like a BREP into a mesh, and that is using the mesh BREP component. So we can try to do that. So we're going to take our BREP geometry and then connect it into our mesh BREP component and then turn the preview off and if you don't see all these lines that probably means that you have the uh, mesh wires preview off and you can activate it under the display tab and now you'll notice something you'll notice that when we convert this geometry using mesh BREP what happens is that our geometry gets subdivided in an incredibly large number of faces and also these faces are distributed in really weird and irregular ways. So that is something you can use if you just need a mesh, so if you would need to 3D print this or something that would probably be fine. But as for us the topology of our mesh is fundamental because we want to uh, start subdividing it and the way we're going to subdivide it will determine the look of it, we want to go and convert, the convert this geometry into a mesh that has the lowest possible number of faces. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to delete our mesh BREP component and we're going to go on and first of all we're going to use a deconstruct BREP component to explode our whole geometry into all its faces. What we're going to do next is we're going to extract the edges of each face using a, a wireframe component, BREP wireframe, and that's going to return us the edges of each face, which we are then going to join into curves. And now that we join them into curves, what we can go on and do is we can go to the Weaverbird tab, and in the Create Mesh tab, we're going to find a Weaverbird tile component. If now we connect this here and hide whatever we created before, you see that our mesh faces are converted, our BREP faces are converted into meshes and all the squares are just simply done with another square and then our hexagons are simply split in the middle. And so you'll see that this is a much cleaner and much uh, easier to work uh, result and so we can uh, keep it and work from there. What we're going to do next is we're going to take all these faces because now they're all separated and we're going to go to the Extract tab and get a Weaverbird Join Meshes and Weld. We're going to bring it in. We're going to right click on the Mesh Plus input and flatten it to make sure that everything goes in one single big list. 
And then we also want to create a toggle, set it to true and plug it to the uh, weld component. So what we want to do is that if there are um, corners that are overlapping into these meshes, they're going to be merged into one. So you'll notice that the, G the mesh looks a bit weird and that's because the normals are not all oriented in the same way. That's not going to affect the final result. It's just going to affect the way it's visualized. But if you want to solve that, there is a component that comes with the Mesh Edit plugin. I'm going to put a link for the plugin uh, below, which is called Unify Normals. Uh, Unify Normals. There is another one as well in the Pufferfish uh, component, I think. But so if we now connect this one and we can just go and hide what we had before, you'll see that now our mesh looks much better because the normals are all flipped in the same direction. Great, so now what we did here is through this quick set of components is we took a B-Rep and we converted it into a mesh. And now that we have a mesh, we can start exploring all the power of the uh, Weaverbird plugin to manipulate the mesh topology and get different results. The first component that we might want to try from the uh, Weaverbird uh, toolset is called a uh, Catmull Clark subdivision. So, a Catmull Clark subdivision is a subdivision that will add more faces to our mesh and will also end up making the mesh smoother because what's going to do is it's going to replace each face with its own center and then recreate the mesh around the results. And so, if I connect my mesh here, you'll see that. What we get is if we hide our unify normal component, we get a much smoother result of our mesh. And what we have here is we have a input which asks for the number of levels. So fundamentally how many times we want to repeat this operation. So if I, for example, would put this to two, you'll notice that my meshes already start to become extremely smooth. And also you see that I start having a much higher number of faces. Now, a warning here, working with mesh subdivision algorithms can very quickly escalate and create a gigantic number of faces which will end up crashing your computer. So just be wise and try not to uh, go too crazy. So I could go back now and for example start changing a little bit my geometries. So for example I could try to increase the size of the faces, and if I'll now reset, you see that again I'll get this weird looking branching components. And you will notice that what happens is that the uh, Catmull Clark component smooths our component, but it does that by really changing the geometry pretty dramatically. So if we would want instead to maintain some of the feature and control how much of the original geometry uh, is maintained, we could combine the Catmull Clark algorithm with a second algorithm which is called a uh, constant quad split. So the constant quad split, uh, quad split um, algorithm will add faces to our mesh as well, but it's not going to change its geometry. So what's going to do is it's going to split each face into three or four. And by doing that, uh, it's going to maintain the same exact geometry of the mesh, but it's going to increase the number of faces. So what happens is that if we first run a constant quad uh, split subdivision on the mesh and then run the Catmull Clark, the Catmull Clark has to, the smoothing effect of the Catmull Clark algorithm will be highly reduced because there's going to be a much larger number of faces. And so we can try that out. And so if I'm going to first connect this, You'll notice that my geometry gets added more faces, but the geometry looks exactly the same. So it has more divisions, but other than that, it's the same geometry. And I could just add the slider here. So you'll see that if I would go to two here, that's going to again add more faces. If I'm going to do three, it's more faces, but the geometry stays exactly the same. So there is no change. So let's bring this back to one. And if I now connect the output of this to my Catmull Clark subdivision and I hide my constant squad, you see that my mesh is smoothed, but I still retain a certain level of uh, 
the rigidity of the polygons that I have. And I can play around and, for example, bring my Catmull Clark back to 1, and, for example, raise my Constant Squad split to 2. And so, by, by managing these two algorithms together, you can actually balance out between how much uh, the original sharp edges you maintain versus how much you want to smooth them. So if I, for example, I would go with 1 and 1 for now. Now that I have this, I could, for example, go and play a bit more. For example, try a different one. And reset. And now I have this very triangulated geometry, which yeah looks weird. So I'm gonna go back to something more like a branch. So here we go. Now that we have done this, we can do two more things. So the first thing that we can do is we can see how we can smoothen this geometry even further without actually adding faces. So you understand that we can use the Catmull Clark and add levels, but of course that's going to make your mesh heavier and heavier. But what we can also do is we can instead go to the uh, Smoothen tab and get a Laplacian smoothing component. And what this component is going to do is it's going to smooth your mesh by averaging the vertices, but it's not going to add more vertices and more faces. So the number of vertices and faces will stay the same, but the position of the vertices will be changed to make the mesh smoother. So I can connect my Laplacian smoothing here, and then we can have a certain number of smoothing loops. So, for example, I'm going to say three. And you'll see that, especially in the corners here, the so if I, for example, bring this to zero, you see that our mesh gets smoothed the more levels you add. Of course, this is also going to become slow, so don't go crazy. But so you see that this is here we have a way to um, control this. So. Now that's one thing you can do using meshes, so you can smoothen them in different ways by uh, you, uh, by changing the subdivision level and then using a smoothing algorithm. But another really cool thing that we can do using Weaverbird is that we can actually then play around even more with this um, subdivision. So what we can do, for example, is we can come back and make everything a bit bigger. So I'm going to put everything at around 3, 0 0.3, so that my uh, elements will be a bit thicker. And what I could do then is I'm going to hide my Laplacian, or no, I could work from here. So I could take my Laplacian smoothing now, and I could go to the Transform tab and get a Picture Frame component. And so what this component is going to do is it's going to make a hole at the center of each face. So if we want to make sure that you don't crash your computer, you want to maybe don't ha not have too many faces, so I'm going to put my constant split quad to zero now, so that I'm going to have a relatively low face count. I'm going to then connect the output of my Laplacian to this, and then adding a value in the D input, you can control the thickness of this uh, frame. So, for example, it's at 5 now, I could change it to 12. And I could actually make the holes bigger or smaller. If I now hide the Laplacian component, you see that we have this now perforated mesh here. Now, that's pretty cool, but once again, doesn't necessarily look very organic as we have these very square holes in there. So what we can do is we can just keep doing the same process that we've been doing. So I could, for example, go and get yet another Catmull Clark, connect it there, and you'll see that now the holes will become much rounder as there's going to be split. And so now we, you could do that once again, but of course, be careful as that's going to start adding a lot of faces. So, for example, right now, our mesh starts already having 100,000 uh, vertices and faces. So, just don't go too crazy. And now, let's imagine for a second that you would want to, for example, 3D print such a structure. Now, right now, this mesh has zero thickness. So, you would not be able to do that. But what we can do is, uh, Weaverbird gives us also another component that is called uh, Mesh Thicken. And so we can take that in, 
And uh, the distance default value is set to 5, and we want to definitely make it smaller. So I'm going to make it like 0 0.25 before plugging the mesh. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit crazy. And now I can plug this here. And if I hide my Cutmill Clark, you'll see that now my mesh has been thickened. So it looks a bit weird. But what I could do now is I could, for example, run yet another Laplacian smoothing so that this is going to become a little bit smoother. And now, in order to visualize a little bit better what we created, we could create a custom preview component and use a swatch to color this and hide our Laplacian. And then we could, for example, go again in uh, Arctic mode. And now you could see really well the kind of geometry that we've created, that is this kind of cellular structure, which has then this uh, perforation that you could think as some sort of bone-like uh, lightweight structure on it. So, of course, what's nice about this is that we can then go back in our whole pipeline and, for example, start changing uh, the different geometries. Of course, now it's going to be a little bit slower because and so we can start changing our attribute values. And if we then come and reset our aggregation, all the changes will be proliferated and we're going to have at every step a differently looking aggregation. So this still looks pretty thin. So I could, for example, go quite higher here. Then once again, smooth. And here you go, so you see now my elements have been thickened. So of course you could go back and change different levels of smoothing and different algorithms and so you'll see that your geometry will look very different according to the different kind of changes you're gonna make. So yeah, so this was it for this tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you kind of see the power and the interesting that is done in um, using Weaverbird to manipulate meshes. So I would suggest you before the next tutorial to kind of start playing around and just see what you can create with it. Of course, feel free to just get it out, spread it on social media. You can use the hashtag GHWASP to tag it. So I'll be happy to see what you're creating. And that's it for today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.